All four members of the band were born in West London. Roger Harry Daltrey was born on March 1, 1944, and John Alec Entwistle seven months later on the 9th of October, both at Hammersmith Hospital. Peter Dennis Blandford Townsend was born on May the 19th at Nazareth House, a convent requisitioned as a maternity ward during the Second World War for a nearby hospital. The quartet was completed in 1946 when Keith John Moon was born on 23rd of August at the Central Middlesex County Hospital. Roger John and Pete first met when they attended the same secondary school in Acton, West London. Having made his own guitar, Roger started his own skiffle group before being expelled from school at the age of 15. On leaving school, his band of detours were plying their trade in local clubs. John and Pete became friends at the age of 12, brought together by their similar humour and their love of trad jazz. John too had been playing in the school band, the Confederates, and he invited Pete to join. The first recorded date for Pete and John appearing on stage together is December the 5th, 1958. Roger subsequently invited John to join the detours. John in turn suggested that Pete should also join. After leaving school, the trio took different paths when it came to employment. Roger went on to do a variety of manual jobs, including sheet metal working. John became a trainee tax inspector, and Pete enrolled on a four-year course studying graphic design at Ealing Art College. Whilst at college, he met a number of people who were to have a large impact on his future career, including Richard Barnes and Tom Wright. He was also exposed to many new and exciting influences in the world of art and music, such as Gustav Metzger, Peter Blake and Jasper Johns. Tom Wright lived near to the college in Sunnyside Road, and Pete became a permanent fixture there, listening to an impressive collection of imported records. When Wright was deported for drug possession, Pete and Richard Barnes took over both the flat and the record collection. Pete began to introduce some of the material into the band's act. It would be in Sunnyside Road that Richard Barnes first suggested the name The Who as the group's new name. One of the more famous venues in the band's history is the Gold Oak Social Club, situated at 205 Gold Oak Road, Shepherd's Bush. A fairly unimposing detached house, the club hosted many gigs by the band from 1963. The last gig they played there was on December 3rd, 1965, the day their debut album, My Generation, was released in the UK. The Gold Alt provided the band with a hardcore following, and many of those fans were to provide inspiration, particularly for Pete Townsend, in the way the band evolved. Another venue the band played regularly in the early days. On December 22nd, 1963, the detour supported the Rolling Stones here. After witnessing Keith Richards warming up by twirling his arm, Pete Townsend decided to borrow the action and incorporate it into his own act. Although Richards said he can't remember the incident, he had inadvertently given birth to one of Pete Townsend's trademark movements, the windmill. Although this is a venue at which they seldom played, it is important as it's the scene of drummer Doug Sandham's last gig with the band, which took place on April 13th, 1964. Two weeks later, the vacancy he had left was filled by Keith Moon. In July 1964, Kit Lambert first saw the band perform as the high numbers at the railway hotel Wildston. After speaking to his partner Chris Stamp, they decided that they wanted to manage the band. There was one problem though, the band already had a manager and so the duo went about wooing them from their current contracts. The band's publicist at the time, Pete Meadon, had other ideas and set up an audition at the new Carlton Irish Club, now known as Bush Hall, in Shepherd's Bush for Stone Svengali Andrew Oldham to watch the band. Lambert found out about the audition and turned up uninvited. When Oldham deferred taking on the high numbers, the way was left open for Lambert and Stamp to take over management of the group. The original offices of Kit Lambert and Chris Stamp when they set up New Action Limited, they moved into new office accommodation at 84 Eaton Place, which Kit Lambert described as the only slum in Belgravia. In 1965, Pete Townsend moved from his flat in Ealing into a flat above the offices. The address of the famous Two Eyes Coffee Bar in the heart of London Soho. The coffee bar is famous in British musical history, and many skiffle and rock and roll artists performed here. It was at the coffee bar that The Who auditioned for record producer Shel Tormey, who went on to produce the band's early singles as well as their seminal debut album, My Generation. Okay. 
Soho, in the heart of London, was a very important area for the band. Set in the red light area of the city, it was the focal point of the hedonistic mod movement. In 1964, the band's publicist, Pete Meadon, moulded the band into mod icons. Most of the important clubs, such as the Scene and the Flamingo, were based here, and the band was exposed to many different forms of music imported from the States. Also in Soho is Carnaby Street, which along with King's Road, was the place to buy your fab clothing in the swinging 60s. One of Lambert and Stamp's first moves was to change the band's name from the high numbers back to the Who. They also needed to get them out of their West London stronghold to get them noticed nationally. After setting up their own production company, New Action Limited, they set about getting gigs in central London. In March 1964, the Marquee Jazz Club moved premises to 90 Wardour Street. The new management duo talked the owner into giving the Who a residency. Tuesday night was traditionally a dead night at the club, and on November 24th, 1964, the band made their marquee debut. The now famous black and white image of Pete Townsend arm spinning alongside the newly designed logo for the Who, with an arrow extending from the O in the band's name, and the term Maximum R&B were designed for this residency. On August the 20th, 1964, the band filmed their first ever TV spot for the BBC's The Beat Room. They performed live versions of Bo Diddley's Bring It to Jerome and the Miracles Got a Dance to Keep from Crying. Throughout the years, the band were to perform at the television centre on countless occasions. One such performance on Top of the Pops, which aired on October the 4th, 1973, earned them a lifetime ban from the corporation, which was subsequently lifted. The band auditioned for EMI in Studio 3 of the Legendary Studios on October 22nd, 1964. The label famously turned down the band, citing, The Beatles have set a trend for groups writing their own material, and you've really just got to do it. Weeks later, the Townsend penned I Can't Explain entered the UK charts. The rejection letter from EMI is one of the items the band reproduced in a series of documents included in their Live at Leeds album package. The band used many studios in and around London for recording. The one shown here is Olympic Sound Studios in Barnes, where the band recorded Who's Next and some of the earlier Lifehouse tracks, as well as the preparatory track for the aborted follow-up album, Rock Is Dead, Long Live Rock. The original Olympic Studios was based in Carlton Street off Marble Arch, at which the band recorded, amongst other songs, Substitute. As well as playing at this venue, the band also used photographs of it in the booklet of the 1973 Quadrophenia album. Photographer Ethan Russell assembled the band outside the venue at 5am on August the 24th, 1973, to be photographed under a neon sign saying, The Who in Concert, All Tickets Sold. By the early 70s, the band felt that the studios in the UK were limited compared to the US counterparts and decided to build their own state-of-the-art studio. Ramport Studios in the shadow of Battersea Power Station, South London, was completed, well almost, in time for the band to record Quadrophenia. The promo film for Who Are You, filmed for the Kids Are Right movie, was also filmed here. The flat in which on September the 7th, 1978, Keith Moon died. The night before he had been to a party hosted by Paul McCartney to mark the beginning of Buddy Holly Week. In the early hours of the morning, Keith was found dead in his bed at the age of 32. <laughs> 